going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another batch of quick takes and this week I'll be starting with Star Wars The Clone Wars. I actually just started binging this series recently. They're all on Disney+. Plus. I was encouraged by fellow YouTuber Anthony A. Perez to give the show a chance because I've never been a big fan of the movie. So I'm going to share my quick thoughts on season one. Season one originally aired on Cartoon Network back in 2008. The show was created by George Lucas and it was supervised by Dave Filoni who's become an integral part of Star Wars since working on Clone Wars. He's worked on Rebels, he's worked on the current cartoon series Resistance, and he's also a big part on the live action series The Mandalorian. So I deeply respect Dave Filoni as a creator. So what are my thoughts on season one? I think it's pretty good. I think it's a heck of a lot better than the movie. The weird little pilot theatrical mesh up movie which did not get me hyped to see this, the Clone Wars show back in the day. So it took me over 10 years to give this show a chance. And I think there are some solid episodes in here. Uh, a lot of them are standalone. A couple of them are story arc episodes. They combine story arcs in different episodes. And th I think there's no... Actually, take that back. There was one episode that I did not like. And it was headlined by Jar Jar Binks. I'm sure by now you know how I feel about Jar Jar Binks. Not a fan. And so having him lead an episode where his clumsiness accidentally saves the day was just so cringe inducing but you know I do respect Ahmed Best as an actor and I, I do give him credit for trying to make the character work. Now, some of my favorite episodes I do enjoy the extended story arc where R2-D2 goes missing and Anakin is determined to save him. I do enjoy that story arc awfully well and this series actually shows why Ahsoka became an integral character to the Star Wars lore. Because if you watch her in the movie, she's so annoying and obnoxious, and I question why she's there. But watching her in this season, you're like, okay, I'm starting to see the potential of Ahsoka as a character. And I really enjoy the Ahsoka this season. And this series does a great job, or at least this season, I think does a great job of expanding and fleshing out Characters from the prequels that a lot of cues are being underutilized. Good examples include General Grievous. You understand him a little bit more. And Count Dooku. And I would even say Anakin Skywalker. I think Hayden Christensen was heavily criticized for his performance over the years. And while he didn't voice Anakin in this series, because the voice actor does a good job doing an impersonation, I think the series does a great job of expanding more of Anakin as a character, seeing his strengths as a Jedi, and also seeing some of the fears sometimes that eventually leads him to the dark side later on. Uh, one of my favorite episodes is a story arc involving a virus on the planet Naboo that's harming Padme, and you get to see some of the fears of Anakin in that as he's desperately trying to save the day. My favorite episode of season one, though, is got to be the season finale, which I would describe as Star Wars meets Die Hard, as there's these bounty hunter terrorists that lead this hostage situation in the capital of Coruscant, and only Anakin can save the day. I thought that was a really awesome episode, and it left, me, it left on this cool little cliffhanger, and I'm excited to see where it continues uh, hopefully in the next season. So I did enjoy the Clone Wars season one overall. I don't think there's any great episode except the finale. The finale was awesome. And there's some really good episodes in there as well. There's some intense themes at times. Some of which were so mature that really surprised me considering I thought this would be too kid friendly. Uh, the animation's solid for a TV show. I enjoyed seeing Star Wars expanded into animation and I'm excited to see where the series goes on from here. I'm going to give season one of Star Wars The Clone Wars a uh, four out of five stars and on the 100 point scale I'm going to give it a 77 out of 100. And speaking of Disney Plus I actually just finished watching the first season of High School Musical the musical the series. This is a new version of sorts of 
the high school musical franchise. It's actually a very meta series. The series is set in the high school which the high school musical movies were filmed and the drama theater class puts on a production of high school musical and a lot of the songs from the film are featured in this series along with some new ones. Uh, it's pretty much your standard high school story. You have some misfit characters being a part of this class. You have unconventional characters get the leads, and then sparks fly, rivals ignite, and then a theater class becomes a family. And this is a very corny show, and I wasn't expecting much going in. When I first heard of the series, I'm like, what is this? And full disclaimer, I actually really like the High School Musical movies, and that is a weird thing to say coming out right now, but... I enjoy those movies. Uh, they were actually kind of a staple in my childhood, actually. And I do have a soft spot for all three movies, especially the first one. So, watching this series, I actually think it's not that bad. I actually loved the meta humor throughout. Uh, there's characters who break the fourth wall throughout in that style that had been popular in other comedy shows like The Office and Modern Family. And they do it in this show. And it's done very well here. I care just enough about the characters to where I got into each of the dilemmas that they're in. Some are a little cheesier than others. And they actually do have some pretty heartfelt drama in there. Especially with the main character, Ricky, who's trying to try new things while his parents are going through a divorce. I think that... Especially after just watching Marriage Story, I think is just shows, yeah, that can be very hard on children and teenagers, and it shows it here very well, I think. I do enjoy the songs in here when they recreate a song from the High School Musical movie. They're done very well, I think. Probably not as good, obviously, as the original movie, but still done very well. I do like the new songs that are made for this series. I like that they're not trying just to recapture the nostalgia of High School Musical. They're trying new things as well. And it was very refreshing to see. The show was consistently funny throughout. Not all of it works. Like I said, it is cheesy. There are some forced attempts at humor at times. Not all the jokes works. Most of them work. And I, I enjoyed the characters enough. I got into their situations and I bought into the what eventually becomes a family dynamic for the, these group of kids. I don't think High School Musical, the musical, the series will go down as great, I guess, as the original movies. But it does its own thing and I respect it for that. And season two has just been greenlit and I'm curious what they're going to do in the second season. Because they've established that Season 2's not them recreating High School Musical 2, so I'm curious what the second season's going to be like. I'm really intrigued. Season 1 of High School Musical, the series, is getting a 4 out of 5 stars for me. And on the 100 point scale, I'm going to go 74 out of 100. I actually did enjoy this. Surprisingly well. Marriage Story is a movie I finally watched on Netflix recently. And I like to talk about it in this brief, quick take. Marriage Story was directed by Noah Baumbach, and this is my first exposure to this director. I haven't seen any of his other films like The Squid and the Whale or Francis Ha or any of the other movies he's directed. I know him as a writer. He's worked with Wes Anderson a couple times on some of his movies, so I'm familiar with him as a writer, but not really him as a director. So this is a great little exposure to Noah Baumbach as a director, and it actually does make me interested in checking out more of his film, because Marriage Story is utterly phenomenal of a movie. The movie stars Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, who play a married couple who have successful careers. Adam Driver is a play director, and Scarlett Johansson is an actress. And it looks like they're happily married and they enjoy that their lives. But as you see in the movie, their marriage slowly starts to fall apart. And they're in the stage of wanting to have a divorce. And so this whole movie plays out like you're watching a real life scenario of a married couple breaking down. Not once in the movie did I feel like I was watching an artificial movie 
of actors playing the emotions. This just felt like a real movie with believable situations where you see a couple breaking down, arguing over things that they accuse each other of messing up in the relationship. And then when we get to the divorce stuff and you get to see them, they bring lawyers in there and they tend to over-exaggerate the problems of the relationship so that one party can get more out of the custody of the child. As they do have a child and they're debating on what's best for the child in that situation. And I didn't think I'd get into this movie at first because I've never been... I've never been in any relationships. I've, I haven't had anything like that. And I thankfully live with a happily married parents who have never even thought of the prospect of divorce, even though they've had some... They'll have some slip-ups in their relationship like every married couple has, but they go through it and they're still happily married to this day. I've never related to any of the problems this movie had, but all around, this is a soul-crushing movie just because of how real everything felt. And watching this movie really hits the nail in the head of why divorce is very damaging, especially for children involved because they don't get to see their parents together anymore. And I just find that a very sad situation to be in. And this movie actually illustrates that in a very soul-crushing way. The performances in this movie are fantastic. I knew Scarlett Johansson was a great actress, and she shows it as always, but this is Adam Driver's movie. He really lets loose in this film, and you get to see his full range and full display in this movie. And I love what he had to bring in this movie, and they both are excellent together. That heavily talked about breakdown argument scene. One of the best scenes of 2019. Just from the acting alone. It really is. And there's a, some great supporting actors in here as well. You got Alan Alda and Laura Dern who was a scene stealer as well. Ray Liotta I thought was enjoyable. And Wallace Shawn. There's some cool little talent in there that helps elevate the movie's material. And then I was surprised that Randy Newman did the score for this movie, for you know, scoring the Toy Story films. I thought that was, he did a really beautiful job as well. And I think all around, Marriage Story is easily the best Netflix movie I've ever seen. I can't find anything I have against in this movie. A lot of it has to do with how real this movie felt and its writing and its direction. Beautiful casting and the acting was great. And this movie definitely hits home on the fact that how damaging a divorce can do to a relationship. And I'm going to give Marriage Story 5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting 100 out of 100. This movie is awesome, you guys. And finally, on this week's edition of Quick Takes, I'd like to talk about the movie Crawl. Crawl was a movie I missed in theaters back in 2019, but I just ran it on Redbox. Crawl is a Sam Raimi produced horror film and it involves a teenage girl who's a swimmer who ends up looking for her dad in the middle of a hurricane and when she does find her dad they end up being trapped in a crawl space underneath their house with some gators roaming around on the loose all the while the hurricane's starting to build up and the house is starting to flood underneath. Best thing about Crawl was easily its tension. Uh, that, that, that was what made the movie so entertaining to watch. The movie did a successful job of putting you on the edge of your seat, especially when the gators are on screen and the characters are struggling to survive. There's some impossible chances that they must undertake to get out of the situation between the gators and the rising flood waters. And it's all around a very suspenseful movie because of that. Even though Sam Raimi didn't direct this film, you can feel his touches throughout that made the film a ton of fun to watch. And you forget when you're watching the movie, like, how is this a rated R film? There's not really that much extreme stuff in it, but then... The gators come out, start attacking, and then there's like a 
crazy amount of gore in this film, and you're like, oh, that's why. On the flip side, though, are two main characters, the father and daughter. Uh, they're well acted. Uh, the father is played by Barry Pepper. I've always liked him as an actor. And, like I said, they're well acted, but their characters are very paper thin. And they, we see that they have a strained relationship that they've had over the years. And, to be honest, whenever they start talking about that, that's when the movie slows down. And this is only an hour and a half long. This is a very short movie and quickly paced, but whenever they talk about their personal problems, the movie slows to a halt. I was more interested in the suspense and tension of this film than I was any real character building. The moments that slow the movie down for me. Also, I do get annoyed in horror movies when there's the traditional tropes of characters making stupid decisions throughout. And yeah, that's what happens here, especially when they're trapped and some of the decisions they make to try to get out of it. Some of them are ridiculously stupid. And you have to suspend your disbelief at times as well, obviously. But the movie is still a ton of fun to watch. And I was more impressed with the fact that Clearly the gators were CG, but it never took me out of the movie because of how good the tension was. Like, I was able to buy into the fact that uh, those characters are terrified and, they, and other characters were attacked by these gators when they were trying to rescue them. And I think this is a very fun movie, and apparently Quentin Tarantino said this was his favorite movie of 2019. Something I find a little insane, obviously, because of those many, many great movies that came out last year. But that is an interesting little thought. Crawl is a fun little movie. It's not my favorite movie of 2019, but it is fun to watch. I think it does nail its suspense. It's definitely an entertaining little red box rental. If you miss it in theaters, I suggest... If you can find it on a streaming service or if there's a red box near you, definitely check it out. And hopefully you'll be entertained by it. I'm going to give Crawl 3.5 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 70 out of 100. So that wraps up this week's batch of quick tape. So I hope you enjoyed this video where I shared my thoughts on the first seasons of The Clone Wars and the High School Musical series. I was talking about Crawl and Marriage Story. If you've seen any of these things I talked about, definitely share your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you love them? Did you hate them? Were you mixed on them? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button to see more content, and that notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides quick takes, I also do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!